Good morning and uh, welcome to Morning Moments. I'm so glad you joined me for another uh, one of my guests. Uh, Roger Orozco is a the founder of Just One Opportunities and uh, he has been ministering in Nicaragua for years and I've asked him to be my guest today. Roger, tell us a little bit about yourself and your ministry. Well, Andy, thank you so much for the opportunity that you have given me to come and share about just one opportunity. Um, just to give you a little bit background, I grew up in one of the most remote villages in Nicaragua. In the village where I grew up in Nicaragua, there were only 70 people. And to go to school, I went, my first time when I went to school, and the, I was nine years old. To go to, in, in, in order to go to school, I had to work for two and a half hours to go to school and also cross the river. With one hand, I had to hold my books, and with the other hand, I had to swim the river. And, and I did that on the sixth grade. And after that, uh, the Lord gave me the opportunity to go to an orphanage, to go to get my high school education there. And, and when I was at the orphanage, I, um, I met this wonderful family from the United States, and they offered me the opportunity to come to the United States and get an education. So I came here, and to, I didn't know English, and so I went to Old Dominion University to learn English as, sec as a second language. And after that, I went, I went to Old Dominion and studied international business and finance there. And in 2012, and 2009, actually, I got married to my wife. Now my wife is from here, the United States, and we have two kids, um, Javi and Adelina, and they are the, a great blessing from the Lord. So in 2009, the Lord gave us this vision about just one opportunity. And the first time when I heard about just one opportunity, I didn't want to do the ministry that the Lord was calling me for those for the village where I came from. And my first reaction was like, just one opportunity serving in remote villages of Nicaragua. I don't know if I can do that. Who is going to go to those remote villages and with me to share the gospel there? Well, that's how just one opportunity started. A year later, just one opportunity in 2012. Just one opportunity started. And our mission is to break the cycle of poverty in remote villages of Nicaragua through the practical expression of Christ's love. And we do, how do we do this? We reach, we work with the most remote villages of Nicaragua and in three different areas. One is the evangelism. We believe that in order for people to be changed forever, is to have a relationship with the Lord. And no matter where you are, whether you are in a most developed nation like the United States or in a, in a third world country like Nicaragua and working with remote village of Nicaragua, but if we have Jesus, we have everything we need. So today we work with five local pastors from those remote villages of Nicaragua. And we are reaching out to 18 different villages and sharing the gospel of Christ and the great things, the stories that we hear, how God is transforming the lives of the people. And one of the great stories, one of the pastors who is blind, and this pastor works hours to other villages to share the gospel of Christ. And that is an inspiration for me to really serve the Lord and to reach out to those villages. So, the gospel is number one. Second is education. We believe that education is a very powerful tool to break the cycle of poverty. So today we, we work with the local teachers in those remote villages of Nicaragua. We train the teachers, and then they can become teachers in their own villages. And today we work with the teachers, and we help students from elementary school all the way way until they find a job to so go through elementary school, high school, college, and then we help them to find a job. And that is where they can provide for their family. But not only that, 
the education is a tool, but this, we have 60 students today. And those, that is a big ministry for us to share the gospel with those students so that they can go to college and share the gospel with other students too. So we can reach out more people for Christ. Today we have 35 college students and the rest of our high school students from those remote villages of Nicaragua. And the only way they go to college is because just one opportunity provide them an opportunity to get an education. And the other part of our ministry is practical needs. So the practical needs today, how we do this? We go through, um, we build our houses to improve sanitations in the communities because there is no our houses. We also build, um, um, improve the uh, clean water for those villages. So we work with the local community, we dig well and make sure that they have water in their villages. And we also do, um, we sometimes we build pastoral houses to help the pastors to have a place to stay with their families when they go to those villages. And then we also recently, we did a bridge, a bridge where the river that I used to cross. And today this bridge is, um, has served about 6,000 people. And they, and before that river was very dangerous and some people were drowning during the winter. Now they cross this, this bridge and it's just amazing what the Lord is doing through just one opportunity. Those are the, the three different areas that we focus our ministry. And one of the great blessings is no matter what we do, whether it's education or practical need, the gospel is being shared across all those regions of Nicaragua in those remote villages where it is hard to share the gospel. And it's amazing what the Lord is continue doing. You know, I was just thinking while you were talking about that, how often I've heard that Jesus is the bridge that built is that is built between us and God. And it's because his sacrifice on the cross, we now can have access to God through Amen. Christ, who is that bridge. But still yet, you folks have built a, a literal bridge so that people can actually go from one side to another and uh and and then while they're while they can pass through that bridge they're hearing about jesus and in even getting that spiritual bridge in which which they could reach uh, god by too well and that's a great great point and here um one of the thing is during the during the winter a lot of people were separating they couldn't go to church yeah. because there was no this bridge now with this bridge, so many people are coming to church in the other side of the and the other side of the village because there is a church there. So this has been an amazing way to reach out to people for Christ and also to improve the connection between market and to the connection to healthcare and all of that. And it's just like it's just amazing how the Lord works. And here I am in the United States in I was in the beginning, I didn't want to do this ministry. And now the Lord more than ever has given me this passion to reach out to those remote villages and continue sharing the gospel and see lives change forever. You know, one of the things that Roger was telling me before we started this interview is that he's working here in Virginia Beach, same city that I live in, in a full time position. And God has blessed him in that full time position so that he can still uh still do the administrative part of this ministry and and be supplied by his family not to take any funds from the ministry but that he's he's taken care of by his own job and but still has that passion to be able to support five pastors in 18 villages yes and that the lord is just amazing and as you know, and the, all these, and uh, the sick things, the sick students that we have too, we, we sponsor financially for them to go out to college on a monthly basis. Like, and they having the pastors and the teachers and the students that we support. And it's just amazing what the Lord is doing through the, the support of the community here in the United States. And definitely, if anybody's interested in learning more about our ministry, we'd love to, I would love to meet and, 
in person and share with you. I have I have thousands of pictures and all of that of what we're doing in Nicaragua. Well, what I'm going to do for Roger, I'm going to going to be able to put in the comment section the connection to to just one opportunity uh, uh, in the comment section, so that you could get a hold of his website, you could get a hold of his contact information. If you want to know more information about him, if you feel led to 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 support him through funds. Or, or through sponsoring, and there's a lot of needs that he's got yeah. listed, and it's way too many to mention each individual need, but there's a lot of needs on that website that you could check with him and ask him about his most immediate needs. But more important than any of that, although financial support is very important, yeah. I want you to be praying for him and his mm -hmm. ministry yeah, please. so that these, these young, this young people that are now being able to go to school, now getting an education, now getting a college education, they're going to break that that curse of poverty that's in this that it's in these small villages and break through through from poverty and have have a, a wonderful, wonderful difference in the lives not only of this generation, but generations to come. Amen. Roger, I am so thrilled to be able to get to meet you today. And to be able to get to share uh, your story and your and your message here on Morning Moments, Andy, thank you so much for the opportunity you have given me and for what you're doing to be able to for giving a voice. What you, the Lord put in your heart to share these stories with other ministries, with other people, because we know that the Lord used you to be able to do this. And thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you, Roger, for joining me today. And I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me for Morning Moments. Please pass this interview on to others and, and keep coming back for some more Morning Moments.